Now, I want to highlight a story that some of you may not choose to read because of the subject matter, but it clarifies some of the reasons why we may be inspired to write a story, the ways that once published it can be marketed, and how to find readers who will support what you have created. All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood is the story of a most unconventional and even questionable relationship. Eight-year-old Wavy has seen her fair share of trouble. She lives with her abusive mother, little brother, and her drug-dealing stepfather in rural Kansas. One night, she witnesses a motorcycle accident and comes to the rescue of the injured man, a tattooed ex-convict working for her stepdad. In thanks, he begins to care for the neglected child, often providing the only attention she receives. Kellen makes sure Wavy gets to school he buys her clothing, and each begins to imprint upon each other in lack of what they receive from others in their lives. Eventually, once Wavy is a teen, the relationship becomes physical at her instigation. There are a number of names you can give to this relationship. Grooming is one of them. Inappropriate, inexcusable, those are other words. Disturbing, but also real. Also, in its way, loving. Wavy and Kellen continue to orbit around each other's lives until both are well into adulthood. All the ugly and wonderful things has many layers to it. It's about trauma, and it's about illegal drug activity, and it's about prison, and it's about healing, and it's about an emotional and sexual relationship that is illegal and immoral. It is also based on the real experiences of the author. I mention this story not to recommend it, but to advise it as a writer your job isn't to make things pretty for other people. If you want to write about real, authentic experiences, you're going to sometimes create stories that make people uncomfortable. If you write about pedophilia, incest, addiction, insanity, crime, coercion, shame, murder, betrayal, or any of the so-called seven deadly sins, you're going to provoke reactions from some of your readers. Many of them, cannot separate their personal experiences and prejudices with the topics in your stories. You're gonna narrow your readership base through your subjects, but we cannot hold back our truths, our creative license at the risk of offending others. Write as honestly and nakedly as you are able. Making your story palatable for others is the job of editors and agents and publishers. I hope that many of yours can be as supportive as Bryn Greenwood's were for her because this is a profound book that they all took a chance on and also won a number of literary awards, including the 2016 Kirkus Prize for Fiction. Mrs. Norton said, I want each of you to stand up and say your name and one thing you did this summer. Whispers bubbled up all over the classroom like butter on a skillet before you pour eggs in. We went down the rows, following the alphabet, so I was near the end. Maybe something would happen before they got to me. Maybe the fire alarm would go off, or maybe there would be a tornado like last spring. We all went into the hallway behind the gymnasium, and lots of kids cried. I liked the darkness, and waiting for a tornado to tear the school away. Nothing like that happened. It never did when you wanted it to. The girl next to me stood up when it was her turn. Her name was Caroline Peters. And over the summer, she visited her grandmother in California, where she went to Disneyland and rode roller coasters and saw Mickey Mouse and... That's enough, Caroline, Mrs. Norton said. One thing. Then it was my turn. I had things to tell. Don't be afraid of tackling the darker issues if it makes sense for your characters and for you. You may want to have millions of avid readers, and you may be lucky to have a few dozen. You might need to write your story, yet believing you will be underappreciated and surprisingly find that you have created a story space for many readers to find their way in.